Well, good morning, everybody. We're glad to see each and every one and be on Facebook Live this morning. Uh, uh, we're blessed uh, today to be here because Brother Joe. Uh, God allowed us to see another day, and we're here to worship Him in spirit and in truth. Uh, we want to go before our Heavenly Father in prayer as we lead off today, realizing that all things work together for good for them that love you. And we're hoping that any any type of difficulty that might present, just be patient, and the technology crew will, will alternate you and, and be able to work you in. So as we come this morning, for those who have special prayer requests, we will take that in later on before the service ends. But right now, let's go to our Heavenly Father in prayer that he'll accept our worship uh, through the Facebook Live and to those who are present with us this morning. Let us pray. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Lord, we thank you for this great opportunity that we could come before your throne this morning. And those who are around Facebook Live and those amongst the technology, we want to say thank you for giving the vision and the wisdom to put this uh, together. And we just ask you to be with us today, be with Pastor Stevenson as he brings the message that he'll open the hearts of men and women that somebody who don't know the ways of your your cross through your son, that they'll cry out and ask for forgiveness and be part of members of the body of Christ. We just ask you to be with us and things that be done and decent in order. These are prayers be humble asked in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 We're gonna give we're gonna uh, play a song or two to give people time to get in. We started a little bit early. So y'all just enjoy the music and we'll be starting here in about four or five minutes.
Amen. Y'all ready to have some church this morning? Amen. Tell it. Tell it. Amen. We're thankful for all those that are joining us this morning here on the broadcast. Um, we're, got, we're a little different this morning due to the ice and the snow and everything that's happening. Um, we decided to do these things from home. So all of us are either at home or there's some of the leaders that are at the church that are doing this. Um, so y'all bear with us. For, um, we're just trying to figure this out. This is the first time we've ever done anything like this. Um, prayerfully, you can all hear us, but we're going to have some singing on this morning, some good old congregational singing. I need y'all to sing in your homes as if you're in the church building, and we're just going to have a good time in the Lord. Um, let's start off with an oldie but goodie. Hold to God's unchanging hand. Anybody holding to God's hand this morning? No matter what you're going through, no matter how you feel, you got to hold to God's unchanging hand. To God's unchanging hand, everybody ought to hold to his hand. Hold on to my God's unchanging hand. Just build your hopes on things eternal. Hold to God's unchanging hand. Hey, because, because. Because time is filled with swift transition. Yeah, not of earth done who can stand. Oh, build your hopes on things eternal. You ought to hold, hold to God's son. Changing hand, well, everybody ought to hold on to his hand, hold on to my God's unchanging hand. Everybody ought to hold, hold on to God's unchanging hand. All you gotta do is build your hopes on things eternal, eternal. Hey, you ought to hold. Oh, to God's unchanging hand, you got to trust in him who will not leave you. I need y'all to sing in your homes. Hey, oh, what so ever years may bring, and if by earthly friends for say, Second, still, still, still more closely to him. Cling. Everybody ought to hold on to God's hand. Hold on to God's unchanging hand. Everybody ought to hold to his hand. Hold on to God's unchanging hand. All you got to do is build, build, build your hope. Some things eternal, Lord Jesus. Hey, you ought to hold, hold to God. Some now, this is the good verse right here. It says this. It says, when, when your journey is completed. When it's all over. And dear to God, you have been true. I know that faith. And bright your home in glory. Anybody want to go to heaven for real? Hey, oh, 
we are in raptured so will I. Well, everybody ought to hold on to his hand. Just hold on to God's unchanging hand. Everybody ought to hold to God's unchanging hand. All you got to do is build, build, build your boots on. Turn. 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 Oh, just hold on to God, unchanging. Somebody ought to hold on to His hand. Just hold on to God's hand. Just unchanging hand. Hold on to God. Oh, to God's unchanging hand. All you gotta do is be. Build your hopes on things eternal. Lord Jesus, hold on to God's unchanging hand. Amen. Anybody holding to God's hand right now? With everything going on, we just got to continue to hold to God's unchanging hand. We're going to have another song, and then after which we'll have scripture reading from Brother Burns and prayer. Two wings, two wings. You want both of your wings? I say, y'all want both of your wings? I'm not talking about two pieces and a biscuit. I'm talking about those two wings to veil my face, two wings to veil my feet. You all help me sing this one. I need all my bases to come on and help me sing. I want two wings, two wings to veil my face. I want two wings, two wings. Come on, bases. To veil my feet. I want to hear you. I all my men. Wings. And if I have a few sisters that can get down there, I need y'all to help me sing it. Soprano, alto, tenor, sing it. Two wings to veil my face. I want two wings. Two wings to veil my feet. I want two wings. Two wings to fly away in the world. Oh, come on, I need two wings. I want to win. I want to win. Listen, one of these old mornings, it won't be very long. Oh, you're going to look for me down here. And I'll be gone on home. Lord, I need two wings. Two wings yeah. To Lord, two wings. Two wings to veil. Two wings. I want to fly. Oh, and the world can't do me no more. Hey, listen to me now. Meet me, Jesus. Meet me, Lord. I want you to meet me in the air. But if these two wings should fail me, I want you to meet me with another path. Lord, I need two wings. Two wings. Come on, girl. Lord, two wings. Two wings. Two wings to, to fail. Me. The two wings. I want to fly. Lord and the world. I like this verse right here. It says this. Up in glory, I got a long white robe. Up in glory, got a new pair of shoes. But most of all, I got a long pair of wings. I'm going to fly away and spread the news. Lord, I need two wings. Yeah. Lord, two wings. Two wings to veil, two wings. I want to fly hey, in the world. Hey, hey, two wings. Hey, Lord, two wings. Lord, two veil. Let's all together stand for this reading and prayer. Hey, I want to fly. Oh, and the world can't do me no. Amen. Brother Burns. Amen. Amen.
First Peter chapter four, verses seven through eleven. But the end of all things is at hand. Be ye therefore sober and watch unto prayer. And above all things, have fervent charity among yourselves, for charity shall cover the multitude of sin. Use hospitality one to another without grudging, as every Every man has received the gift, even so minister the same one to another, and as good stewards of the manifold grace of God. If any man speaks, let him speak as the oracles of God. If any man minister, let him do it as of the ability which God giveth, that God in all things may be glorified through Jesus Christ, to whom be praise and dominion forever and ever. Amen. God bless you. Let us together pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for giving us this day, Lord to come and study thee in spirit and truth. Heavenly Father, we just want to say thank you. Thank you for watching over us this past week, Heavenly Father. Thank you for helping us get through the things that we go through on a day-to-day -day basis. Heavenly Father, we have those that are sick and going through illnesses right now. We just ask that you just Put your arm of protection around them, Lord, and render unto them that they will get back to a normal portion of their health. Heavenly Father, as we move on into this service, we just ask that you just open our hearts, Lord. Open our hearts to the sermon that Brother Jerry is going to preach to us so that we may apply the things that he teaches us in our everyday lives. Heavenly Father, again, we just want to say thank you. In Christ's name, we pray. Amen. 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 We're about to prepare our hearts for communion. Take your minds back to the cross and all uh, God has done for us, the sacrifice of his dear son. As we prepare our minds for communion, let's sing a verse of he loved me so. Why did my Savior come to earth and to the humble gold? Why did he choose the lowly birth? I can't see if I'm going to get your bottom part he loved me so. He loved me so. Thank you, Jesus. He loved us. He loved me so. He gave. His precious life for me, for me, because He loved me so. Brother Gary. Brothers and sisters, this is the part of the service that we commemorate. We celebrate the death, the burial, and the resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. It's because of what Jesus did for us so, so long ago makes it possible for us to be able to have, make heaven our home one day if we live according to the scriptures. That is no small thing whatsoever. It was not within ourselves to be able to save ourselves. We were lost, we were without hope, but it was because of Jesus. It's because of God loving us so much that he gave his only begotten son that we might have a right to the tree of life. That's why with every Lord's Day we celebrate, we remember what Jesus did for each and every one of us. We remember how we were lost, how we had no hope, but because of him, 
Because of Jesus, we have hope. Because of Jesus, we have the victory. We have joy. And every day we, that God gives us breath and wakes us up in the morning, we should be celebrating. We should be joyous because of what Jesus did for us. <clears throat> Isaiah 52, I'm sorry, Isaiah 53 says this about Jesus. Who has believed our report? And to whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? For he shall grow up before him as a tender plant, and as a root out of dry ground, he has no form or comeliness, and when we see him, there is no beauty that we should desire him. He is despised and rejected by men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief, and we hid, as it were, our faces from him. He was despised and we did not esteem him. Surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Yet we esteemed him stricken, smitten by God and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement for our peace was upon him and by his stripes we are healed. Matthew 26, starting at verse 26, we find the Lord's Supper instituted, and it reads, And as they were eating, Jesus took bread. He blessed it, he broke it, he gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body. Then he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you. For this is my blood of the new covenant, which was shed for many for the remissions of sins. But I say to you, I will not drink of this fruit of the vine from now on until that day when I drink it new with you in my Father's kingdom. Let us give thanks. Most holy and righteous Father, we come thanking you so much, Father, for this day you've blessed us with. But most importantly, Father, we thank you for Jesus. We thank you for the cross that he bore for each and every one of us, for the entire world, Father. We thank you, for Father, for him. We pray, Father, that we forever keep the cross before us, striving each day of our lives to be a little bit more like Christ as we go through uh, the days and the years that you allow us to have. Father, we thank you so much for this bread that represents his broken body and this cup that represents his shed blood. We ask, Father, that we will partake of it in a manner that's pleasing and acceptable unto you. For this is our prayer in Jesus' name, amen. You may all partake of the communion. <clears throat> this will conclude this part of our service. Thank you. Amen. Thank you. Amen. We're gonna have Amen. The cross. We're gonna have one more verse of the song. We have one more verse of a song, and then we're going to turn it over to Brother Jerry L. Stevenson. He is coming back to the pulpit this morning. We have missed him immensely. Um, he's been out um, recovering, but he is back, even if it's in a virtual setting. Um, and we're thankful to be able to have him hear a word from him on this morning. We're going to have a, uh, one more verse of a song, High Behind the Mountain. And you want to go where the chilly winds? I've, been, I've had enough of the chilly winds <laughs> the past couple of weeks. Up here in Louisville. And so we want to go where the chilly winds don't blow. Hide behind the mountain. Y'all help me sing. But can I put your hands together? Mm, I'm going to hide behind, hide behind the mountain. Said I'm going to hide behind. I'll hide behind the mountain. Said I'm gonna hide. Lord, I hide behind the mountain. I'm going where the chilly, chilly wind, chilly wind don't blow. Oh, yeah. 
left. I'm going to hide, hide behind. I'll hide behind the mountain. Said I am going to hide oh, church. Lord, I'll hide behind the mountain. Lord, I'm going to On the mountain, going where the chilly wind, chilly wind don't blow. Now I know you having hard times, you suffering loss and going through stuff, but I know that G Jesus is said Jesus is my mountain. Said I know Jesus. I don't care what you're dealing with. Jesus is your Put your trust in King Jesus. Jesus Pedro, y'all keep your trust in Jesus this morning. No matter what's going on, I know it hurts right now. But you're going where the chilly. I'm going where the chilly. Chilly. Going where the chilly. The chilly wind don't blow. Oh, Lord, you know I'm going where. Chilly wind hey. don't blow. Lord, I'm going where. Anybody, anybody want to go where? Ain't no pain and no sorrow. Chilly wind don't blow. God, wipe every tear from your weeping eyes. Chilly wind don't blow. Hey, no more bills and no more pills, y'all. Chilly wind don't blow. Oh, oh, where, hey. Chilly wind don't blow. Oh, 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 oh
uh, was speaking to, wrote them. He, he said, I know you're going through some things. Your life is, amen, life is a, a, is a consistent battle. Job says, a man born of a woman is but a few days and full of trouble. So, so when we wake up in the morning, we know there's going to be trouble in the land. There's going to be trouble all around us. And the question is, what do we do? What, what's going on with the people of God? They are suffering ridicule and abuse. If there's ever been a time in America, can't believe my ears, can't believe my eyes, what I'm seeing in America, that they, they can talk about anything, but don't bring up no Jesus. Oh, it's a sad day in America when we, we are ridiculed and abused uh, on the job and uh, in your community. Christians suffer all forms of persecution at the hands of their neighbors and co-workers, employers, their competitors, schoolmates, and society in general is just, 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 they're angry and they blame everything on God. My brothers and sisters, it comes a time. The scripture says, Peter says, he says to the people of God, he says, now the end of these, of all these things is near. The end of all these things are near. If you understood, if you understand what, the, the, what is going on in the life of God's people, they're suffering. And sometimes you wonder, what, you put up with stuff. You go along with stuff that, that you know is not right. And so you ask yourself, what do we do? I think the apostle Pete, Paul, he says this. He says, he puts it this way to us. He says, now, be, be, be not weary in well-doing. Have you ever felt like, man, I don't know. I do good to people and they kick me in the face. Somebody else say amen. Have you ever, have you ever shown love and kindness to people? And the, love, and the love and the kindness you show them, the more they want to kick your face. It's tough days that we're living in. Everybody that you do good to is not going to appreciate what you do. So Paul said, don't get weary in, uh, of well-doing because in due season you shall reap if you think not. Paul, Peter says, Peter says it this way. He knows what you're going through. God, this is no surprise to God. He knew what was going to be happening. He knew that the pandemic was coming our way. He understood. He knew it years ago. And so he prepared us for this day. My brothers and sisters, God is moving. God is moving in the hearts and in the minds of people. He's moving. Uh, uh, amen. And, and he says, now look, 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 all this you're going through. He said, now the end of all these things is near. <laughs> and, and, and that's the consolation you need to have. So the question becomes, what should we be doing? Have you ever thought about this? Am I doing the right thing? Am I saying the right thing? Oh, when the Lord comes, will he find me working as I ought to be working, doing what I ought to be doing? He said, now listen, I, he said, now the, the end of all these things that you're going through, it is near. It is near. And he says, therefore, therefore be serious and disciplined for prayer. So he tells us, you got to discipline yourself. You got to be serious about yourself. And how do you do it? You get in prayer. Some of you are suffering. Many of you, some of you've had good things happen to you. Don't let the good things cloud your mind and your heart to, to taking you away from the, from the reality that Jesus is coming soon. Brothers and sisters, 
there was a there was a lawyer that came to Jesus one time in the days when people were going struggling they they and and and, and he tempted Jesus he come with the wrong motive but but it, it, the it, the outcome is what we need he says now listen he says listen he said now master we know you are a teacher he said now now what is the what what is the great commandment see jesus knew by, by when god gave moses the ten commandments by the time jesus came there was over 600 laws that had been added to uh the ten commandments that god gave them ten commandments was all they needed but because of their their lack of faith they turned uh, god uh, god's righteousness into their what their righteousness is one of the great problems i see today is we have we spend more time trying to bring people to the church uh, amen and and make them on the church roll what we need to do is to bring people to jesus and jesus will take care of their lives getting close to the church but today today we're bringing uh, let's get as many people in the church well it's okay we need we it's okay to bring people to the church but bring them first to jesus because jesus is the one that's going to transform their lives and so this lawyer come to jesus in the 22nd chapter of the book of uh, of matthew and he says to him in verse number 35 he said which uh, uh he said in verse thick master which is the great commandment uh in the law jesus said unto him thou shalt love thy love the lord thy god with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy mind he said this is the first and the great commandment and he, then he he says now you didn't ask for it but i'm gonna give you anyway you didn't ask what the second one was but i'm gonna give it to you anyway this is free he says and the second one is like unto the first Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. And he says, on these two laws hang all the law and the prophets. My brothers and sisters, as we go through our trials day by day, yeah, we need to know what's going to help us go through the storms. Where are you going to get to find the energy that can make you fully alive in this life? That will enable you to go the distance through hardship, go the distance through your failures, go the distance through your old age, go the distance, yes, even to death. Where are you going to find the strength to carry you through? How are you going to never? How are you going to never say, I'm quitting, I'm not going to go down this road, but I come to tell you, you need a power in your life. You need a power source in your life that's going to help you go go the distance when things are not going well. He says, uh, someone said many years ago, there is a tide in the affairs of men which taken at the flood leads on to fortune, omitted all the voyage of, of their life is bound in shadows and miseries on such a full sea are we now afloat and we must take the current when it serves or we lose our venture i come to tell you we've got to travel this road this road is is rough this voyage on this sea of turbulence is going to it's going to bring us the sorrows in this world and so the question is <laughs> what do what what are our priorities where am and where am i today and what should i be doing brothers and sisters children we've got to look for our priorities if our priorities are not right let me be clear with you you're going to face some real challenges you're going to find yourself beaten down and and turned upside down love love is the one thing 
Jesus said it's all about love. <laughs> it was um, it was uh, the Beatles who said uh, uh, all we need is love. Y'all remember them singing that song? All we need is love. <laughs> Amen. Uh, and the song went on to say, there's nothing you can do that can't be done. Nothing you can sing that can't be sung. Nothing you can say, but you can learn how to play the game. It's easy. And nothing you can make that can't be made. No one you can save that can't be saved. Nothing you can do but you can learn how to be you in time. It's easy. All you need, the song says, all you need is love. All you need is love. All you need is love. My brothers and sisters, I believe God said, he would say to you, here's your great priority. Love God. If you don't understand the love of God, you'll never be able to come and understand what Jesus is trying to get us to do. Let me take you to the book of Luke. Let me take you to the book of Luke, the sixth chapter. If you have that, I want you to run with me over the, to the book of Luke, uh, uh, the sixth chapter. Uh, and and uh, when we get over there, um, we'll start looking at verse number uh, amen, 35. The Bible says, but love ye your enemies. You see what God is saying? He said, but love ye your enemies and do good to all men and to lend. And here is the clink to this whole matter. You love, you do good, and you lend and y'all are not ready for the climax. Y'all are not ready for the climax. Because, see, when you do good, you expect folk to say thank you. When you show your kindness, you want people to say thank you. When you lend them some money, you say pay me back. But what if you do good and they don't say thank you? What if you, amen, what if you love them and they spit in your face? Jesus says, love them. Do good to them. Lend to them. And he says, and here's the key. <laughs> and here's the key. And expect nothing in return. You don't expect people to do good to you. You don't expect it in return. And my brothers and sisters, it becomes, it becomes time. Love hopes all things. Love never fails. And I come to tell you this day that love gives us through Jesus Christ. We love God and we are love man because God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. That whosoever that believeth in him should not perish, but they should have everlasting life. I come to tell you, that's a new kind of a love. Greater love than no man than this. That a man would lay down his life for his friend. And you know what, Jesus? I, it touched me when Jesus, he turned to a sinner. He turned to a crook like me. He turned to a, a man of, of much disease and, and mess in my life. And he says to me, and, and I'm your friend. <laughs> oh, that I don't know about you, but that ought to move you. That ought to move you. But see, some of y'all ain't like me. Amen. Some of y'all are good. Y'all been good all y'all's life. But I wasn't, folks. I, I have to tell you the truth. I wasn't. Done some things in my life that I pray to God that, that, that he will show mercy. He'll show mercy to me. But I come to tell you today, we have a God whose love is beyond the human capacity to understand. This kind of love, when you love God, when you love your neighbor on those two things, will give you the energy, the power to take you through the difficult days in your life. 
There's three, three power sources that I want to give you today that, that love will do for your life. And if you have these priorities, they will clarify the priorities in your life. Let me take, take you to the book of First Peter. I mean the book of uh, John. Let, let's go to First Peter 4. Let me, let, me, let me help you here. Here he says, now the end of all these things is near. Therefore be serious and disciplined for prayer. Above all, maintain an intense love for each other, since love covers a multitude of sins. Brothers and sisters, there is a power source out here that, and without you connecting to this power source, you'll never be able to love God the way God wants you to love him. You'll never be able to love your wife, your husband, your children, your co-workers, your enemies. You, no one will be ever without this, this power. In 1 John, in 1 John chapter 3 and verse 14, he says, he says this. He says, we know that we have passed from death unto life because we love the brethren. He that loveth not his brother abideth in death. What you and I need in this life is a power, a quickening source that will transform us out of the way we used to be, out of what we used to do. How do you do that? Well, the Apostle Paul gives us a hint on this. This here is a quickening. Love has a quickening power has a quickening power in the book of Ephesians, the second chapter, we find these things. And, and here's what he says in verse one. And you, and you have he quickened who were dead in trespasses and sin. He said, you who were dead, you couldn't, you couldn't breathe. Yet you, you felt like you were, uh, amen, you were dead and there was no hope in your life. The word of God says, and who he who hath quickened you. What does that word quicken mean? Well, the word quicken means to be made alive. It, it means to be made alive. And what you and I need is a good quickening power that will make us alive in the darkness of our lives. You know, when, when, when the people of God had gone astray from the word of God, God sent the prophet Ezekiel over to them and, and, uh, and said, Ezekiel, go down to the valley of the dry bones. And he asked him, can these bones live again? You know what people, you know what Ezekiel had enough sense to say, Lord, you only you know whether these bones can live again because they can't live outside of you. So he said to him, go then and tell Israel that they are dead. But here's what I want you to do. Speak to the bones and say dry bones. Brothers and sisters, there's a lot of dry bones in the land today, the people of God are in uh, the valley of dry bones. And what we've got to do is to help people to understand that life is in the spirit of God. How do we get it? Glad you asked. Christians asked, G uh, Jews asked Peter and the apostles in Acts chapter 2. He says, what, men and brothers, what shall we do? Peter said, repent. Every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ and be baptized for the remission of your sins and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. You are, you receive the quickening power. 
when you obeyed the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ, you obeyed the you obeyed and the Spirit of God, the Holy Spirit of God rests within you. You become the temple of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit changes you. This is what here, this is what Paul is talking about in Ephesians chapter 2. He says, Now, wherein in time past ye walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience, among whom also we have we all had our conversation in time past in the lust of our flesh fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind and were by nature the children of wrath even as others but god somebody somebody said but god my brothers and sisters i'm glad i'm glad god stepped in i'm glad he stepped in for me and i know you may not have believed it. you may not want to testify but but you ain't always been here god stepped in when you should have been gone and you know what God has done? What God has done, my brothers and sisters, he has given us. He says, this is the way you will pass from, de from death to life when you have been transformed into the quickening power of the Lord Jesus Christ. And you know what? This is what love, you know what he goes on to say. <laughs> he says now, he says, for above all, I mean, I mean, back in 1 Peter chapter 4, he says now in verse 8, above all, maintain, and maintain an intense love for each other, since love covers a multitude of sins. Brothers and sisters, it's the quickening love power that when you are in touch with God as the Lord God of your life, and you love the brethren, you said, well, he ain't doing right. Well, that God didn't ask you whether he's doing right. God just said, love him. He didn't ask you to wait and see if they were going to be anything. You said, love him. And so here we are. He says, it's love. That's what will conquer anything that's in your way. That's the quickening force. The quickening force. It changed you from death to life because you've learned how to love the brethren. Secondly, secondly, the apostle Peter, in 1 Peter chapter 1, he says, he says uh, in verse 22, he says, by obedience to the truth, having purified yourselves for, in, for sincere love, of brothers love one another earnestly with a pure heart the power source that connects us to the energy that drives our lives and the life of every believer is the fact that we are connected to god and we discipline we are obedient to the call of jesus Somewhere I read in the Hebrew letter, he says, faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. By, with, by faith, without faith, it's impossible to please God. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Do you want to please God? Then, have, then walk in obedience and love your brethren. Love them, knowing that God, God is the light of your life. My brothers and sisters, these, this is the truth that your God wants you to wants you to have in your life. Yes, you, the energy that drives your life every day when you get up. Landon Saunders says this, know that when the sun rises and before it sets, someone will give you the opportunity to be angry, irritated, or upset. If you respond to them in kind, if a man smacked you on your, on your right cheek, 
you smack him with your left on his left cheek. No, that is not what God says. God says, turn and, and let him smack the other one. He says, let's walk. I'm going to compel you to walk a mile. You say, that's okay, Paul. Let's walk three miles. Let's get it. Let's really do it good. My brothers and sisters, what God is doing, what God is doing is preparing you, preparing me to live in the power source of our of the universe the, the the power that moves the universe and that is love here we find in first peter chapter four he says that again above all maintain intense love for each other and he, he says you've got to really buckle down do y'all know there's some folk hard to love you just might as well admit at some time in your life, you wasn't, you wasn't no easy catch for love. But it wasn't until we got to know Jesus. When we began to know Jesus, we began to know how to treat one another, how to love the person that, is, that has talked about us, person that you never thought would hurt you, they hurt you. And, and, and you've got to learn that you can you can overcome, you can overcome. My brothers and sisters, this is the truth that God wants you and I to have. He wants us to know that this truth, uh, we find our strength to never give up on relationships. Why? He says in verse number nine, be hospitable to one another without complaining. How many times have you complained to God about what's going on in, in, in life? What's happening to the church? What's going on in the family? Jesus would say to you, I know it is. I know, I know you got a reason, but listen, just go on and do good. Love them. And here's the key. Based on the gift each one of us have received, use it to serve others as good managers of the varied grace that God has given you. That's the key to this whole thing, brothers and sisters. God has given you a measure of grace to know how to love unlovable people. Sometimes it's difficult. But that's when God does his best work. When he allows you to be the kind of person that he wants you to be. And then all of this, all of this comes down to the power source. The question becomes today, are you connected? Are you connected to the power source of your life? Brothers and sisters, we, we have a lot of people who are good at everything but i think the apostle paul i think he he summarized this this thing best than all you say i'm trying to love the way the apostle said to love well i'm gonna see i'm gonna see when i look at the book of first corinthians the 13th chapter paul says here's he's gonna put you to the test he says now Though I speak with the tongues of men and of angels and have not charity, I am become as sounding brass or a tinkling cymbal. Brothers and sisters, is love is what we need. The world is full of talented, gifted, educated people. If we want a place, <laughs> if we want to put ourselves on the trial, the, in the courtroom of God, if our lives are in the courtroom of God, he would say to those of us, if we were to place ourselves at the mercy of God, he would say to you and me, though I speak with the tongues of men, and of angels, and 
I don't have love. He says, I am become a sounding brass or a tinkling cymbal. So you've got to, you've got, you've got, you've got a gift of, of putting words together. I come to tell you, if all you got is words and there's no love with it, you might as well just leave it alone because it ain't doing no good. Oh, everybody may shout with you, but I come to tell you, God says you're nothing more than a sounding brass or a tinkling cymbal. And then he says, though I have the gift of prophecy and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and though I have all faith, so that I can remove mountains. He says, you, 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 you might think you can remove mountains. But if you don't have love, if you don't have love, he says, I am nothing. And he says, and though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor, and though I give my body to be burned and have not charity, it profiteth me nothing. Brothers and sisters, what is God doing in your life and mine? God wants you, he wants you to show, show the world how to love God. By loving one another. It's like Jesus says, a new commandment I give to you. And that is that you love one another. As I have loved you. And he says, and it is by this shall all men know that you are my disciples. Today is the day. The day is the day that we need to turn love over. And let love be the cornerstone. Here's what we do. Love God. Love God. You say, well, it's easy to love God. No, well, God says, how can you love me? How can you say you love me and you hate it, your brother? I come to tell you, can't that, that that's false love. That's false love. God wants you. God wants you to, to love each other. Love is the foundation of everything. Love, the scripture says, suffers long. It is patient with people. Love is kind. It's courteous. It's good. It's helpful. It's useful. It's giving, showing, and, and showering the favor of love in a man's life. That's what God wants you to do. Can you do that? That's what God has come to tell you. First of all, there needs to be the quickening power that changes thing about you. Everything starts with the quickening power of God's love, that he loved the world, that he gave his only son. You must believe that Jesus is the Christ. You must be repent and be buried with him in baptism. It's when you in that water, you say, well, what does the water got to do? Your obedience. Hello. Your obedience. Get in the water. And let God refresh your life. Obedience to the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. Peter said, I know you're going through a lot in your life. Job says, if you're born of a woman of a few days and full of trouble. But Job says, though he slay me, yet will I trust him. Do you trust the Lord enough to give up everything? To give up everything for the cause of Jesus Christ. If that's your will today, it's time. It's high time. High time for you to come and give your life over to Jesus. Today is the day. Those of you that are members of the body of Christ, and particularly here at Midwest, your energy is run low. You don't know whether or not 
You can, you got the energy to keep on going. Well, I got the news for you. Connect yourself to the power source. Love God. Love your neighbor. On these two things, everything hinges on the love. And when you can't love like that, I'm telling you, you'll get weary of well-being. Today is the day. Let's get, let's turn, let's emerge out of the old life into this new life. Commit yourself. Amen. Convert your life to the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Today is your day to get right with God. As we as we sing the invitational song, I want you to declare today. I'm ready to get my energy connecting back to the power source of my life. What is that power source? Jesus. Holy Spirit, come and rest on me. Holy Spirit, make me new again. Holy Spirit. That's what God would have you to do. Brother John Poole is going to lead us in an in a invitational song. And those of you that have needs for special prayer, write it down. Uh, uh, send it in the comments. We'll pray with you. We'll pray for you. If you need prayer. You need to be baptized. You call us at the church at 502-774-3986. We will, we will turn your life over to Jesus right now as we sing a verse of a song. Well, John, I can't hear up here, and I can't hear it on my uh, iPad. What's happening here?
I'm not able to hear what uh, hear. Hey Burns, bring your bring your stuff over here. Y'all still can't hear. I can hear you now. I don't know my I'm, I apologize. My mic just stopped working all of a sudden. <laughs> it just stopped. We'll sing this song and then we'll give you uh, give it back over to Brother Jerry for um, invitation. Sorry about that, guys. Sure. We need God to show us the way sometimes. <laughs> Even with technology, when we don't know what's going on. <laughs> Lord, show me, show me the way. Oh, cause you know I'm down here, Lord. I need, Lord, I need your power. Will you please show, show me, show me the way. Let's sing that one more time, then we'll give it back over for prayer. Lord, show, show me. This for you, Sister Fraser. This is the Fraser song. it by myself. God, I need your help. Oh, 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 I'm down. I can't call on nobody else but you, Lord. I need your power. Will you please show Show me, show me the way. Brother Jerry. Praise be unto God. Is there any special request uh, for prayer that has been made? I, I don't see them, so um, someone's going to have to uh, give that those requests out there. All right, so prayer request. We have several prayer requests um, at this time. We want to make sure that we keep the the Smith family in prayer um, with all that they're going through right now. Keep make sure we keep them lifted right now. Um, we also want to ask a special prayer. Brother Kevin Stevenson is asking for for the Stevenson. Kevin Stevenson is asking prayer for his family. Can you all hear me right now? Okay. Gotcha. He's asking prayer for his family, his father, um, and his daughter and granddaughter at this time, and also for all the preachers and the members of the church across abroad. Sister Mildred is asking prayer for um, all the preachers and those um, in the church of Christ abroad. Give me one more moment, my phone. Brother Wayne, I'll call you back. I'm reading prayer requests right now, sir. <laughs> we also asking special 
special prayer for uh, Sister Angelica Robinson. We also ask in special prayer for, sorry, y'all bear with me with people calling me. It was throwing my phone off. And that's all I'm able to see at this time. We'll go, uh, we'll go to God in prayer and we'll pray for the rest of them in our closing prayer, Brother Jerry. Praise be unto God. Would you bow with me? Heavenly Father, thank you. We pray that as we have come, that your word would be a lamp unto our feet and a light in our pathway. As we've come, oh God, we humbly bow before you. We recognize that you are God and there is none besides you. Your people are having many struggles. Sister Phaedra uh, and Tashambi Smith, as they lost their child uh, you know how they feel God. i pray that you would send your mercy upon them i pray and thank you for the life that the young child lived and spoke through his through his life to a generation that knows not god father we pray for all of the requests that have been made and set forth for every person that's listening, Lord, we pray that all things will be uh, given for the building up of the souls of men. Go with us today, O oh God, in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Have we done the collection, Brother John? We're going to turn it over, Brother Curry, for collection at this time. While we're waiting on Brother Curry, I'm going to read the rest of the prayer request at this time. We also uh, want to make sure that we ask prayer on behalf on behalf of Sister Mildred once again. She wants to be stay connected to the power source, and she's getting vaccinated today, so pray for her. We also want to ask a special prayer on behalf of uh, Sister Robertson. She's just um, thanking everybody for all the prayers. Um, can you all hear me? Okay. We got you. All right. Um, um, Sister Fowler is asking prayer for her immediate family and extended family that can stay strong through everything. Um, Tati Lopez is asking prayer for her family and her friends. Um, they're just grateful and thankful to the Lord for what he's done and what he's going to do. Um, we also ask prayer for Sister Marion McGill Mason. She's uh, asking prayer for her family and her neighbors and her Christian walk. Sister Purvis is asking prayer for her family in Chicago who are still recovering from health issues, um, asking traveling grace for Sister Donna, and traveling, uh, she's traveling back from Chicago, and traveling grace for herself and co-worker to and from work this week. Sister Bledsaw is asking, also asking prayer for, um, she lost a neighbor this week, Dwayne Watkins, wanna pray for that family and pray for everyone that they will be safe um, with the forecast of the inclement weather. Sister Deborah Fitzpatrick is asking prayers for the Daniels family in the passing of Colette and the Robinson family in the passing of Brenda, which is her neighbor across the street. Um, Sister Hanley is asking prayer for herself, her family, and her friends. Uh, Sister Miles is asking prayer for herself, her family, and peace in this world. Uh, once again, Brother Joe is asking prayer for uh, Phaedra and Tashambi Smith and the loss of their son, um, Ezekiel, this morning. And I, I believe Sister Knight is asking prayer for Crystal and Trinita Thomas in her house and continue prayers for herself and her family. Um, we want to just uh, pray for Sister Carney. She asking prayer for herself and her health and her family and grandchildren. Sister Brano is asking prayer for cousin Dougie Bennett who just went through cancer. Uh, Sister Sharp is asking prayer for Floyd Baker and Linda Barris and Steve Barris at, um, and her health and her family. 
Felicia Bass asking prayer for Crystal Knight. She's uh, on the road traveling down the dangerous how, uh, highways. Uh, Candace Janai is asking prayer for her eldest niece and her journey to become a new mom. Um, Sister Chiquita is asking prayer for her family back home. And I believe that is it. Thank you all so much for y'all's patience this morning. Um, like I said, this is a new thing and we're trying to get it figured out. Um, we're going to remember those in our closing prayer. We're about to hand it over to Brother Curry for collection. Thank you very much. Uh, I'm using Brother Jerry Stevenson's camera. Uh, again, as I, I agree with Brother Malone, we want to apologize for not being able to, to, to get all this together. Uh, we have a number of people in the sanctuary, uh, so we want to apologize to them for our delay. But again, we want to thank Brother Jerry for the message and for all the ministers that deliver God's word. Uh, I, this is an opportunity for you to give back to God as God has blessed you. Uh, God is, this is something that we do. God already have everything that he needs. He is the one that gives things to us, all our blessings come from God. All blessings, all blessings come from God. Uh, we want to thank those that give uh, in person. We want to thank those that actually mail their contribution in for those that are going on Cash App or through the website. Uh, please, uh, you can send your uh, contribution in to our P.O. Box, uh, P.O. Box 11148 or you can send it in to the building, 2115 Garland Avenue. Uh, you just call the office, and if you need someone to come by and pick your contribution up, let us know. Let us know, and we can do that. We can act physically come by and pick it up. Uh, but we uh, would like for you to come by, if, if, it's, if, you, if possible, to pick up your communion and drop off your contribution. Again, we want to thank those that are contributing to our basement renovation. Uh, as you will well know that we, our uh, minister's appreciation is coming up in two weeks and we want to uh, honor our minister of 37 years. There's a, a, a we are getting confused here whether it's 37, 36 or 37, but I think it's 37. So any minister that had worked with the congregation for 37 years deserves honor. So we want to honor our minister for all the hard work that he's put in. Again, we want to thank you for your contribution. We're going to go to God in prayer, and I will come around and collect the uh, uh, contribution from those that are in the audience. For those that are not in the audience, you mail your contribution in or call the office and leave a message, and we will come by and pick it up. Let us go to God in prayer. Dear God of heaven, we bow before you. Thanking you, Father, for all your blessings. Thank you, Father, for our jobs, for our means of incomes, whatever they may be, our stimulus check, our Social Security, our pension, whatever forms of income that we get, Father, we pray that we will give at least a 10% of whatever we have uh, to you as a token back to you, Father. Father, you continue to watch over us. This way, I ask in the name of Jesus Christ, amen. Go ahead, Brother Jerry. Pray, praise be unto God. All those that uh, made the prayer request, we want you to know that we'll be praying for you. I want to just remind you that there are several things that are coming up. Um, the ladies in Richmond's class will be, well, they'll, they'll go to the next Sunday um, because of the, the weather. They won't be meeting today. It'll be next Sunday. Then on the 20, 20th, February the 20th, there'll be a vision day. Youth, um, middle and high schoolers come and to uh, be a part of this guy. So you'll be guided in trying to help you uh, uh, make the decisions about what are your career, what college. Uh, everybody won't go to college, but everybody can get a can go get a career, and we need to help them understand. You know, want to be a plumber? Plumbers make a lot of money, y'all. Have y'all ever called one lately? Uh, 
start off at $75 an hour. Some of them go up to 125. So we, you know, it, 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 you know, we need some plumbers. We need some electricians. Amen. So you all come and, and uh, uh, listen and be a part of that. The Black History Program is going to be on February the 27th. It will be all virtual. Starts at 6.30 uh, p.m. Anything you want to say about, about any of those two, Brother John? About those two? Uh, uh, um, uh, vision all right, our black history program yes we want all for the vision day we need everybody out for that even if you're not you're not a um a student but you can give insight as to careers and and colleges and things like that come and pour into the kids and also black history if you want to be a part of it please let us know um i'll be getting in contact with you all that i've already spoken with because we need to start filming um this week um, so we can make sure we have all that together. So please get with us on those things. Praise be unto God. Of course, the minister's appreciation, Brother Curry was talking about that, is April the 20, 28th. Um, on the 27th uh, at 1 p.m., the uh, Victory Bible Training School College is going to present me with a uh, honorary doctorate degree. I'm, I feel unworthy, but I appreciate the kindness. And when people do kind to you, you ought to at least be able to say thank you. And I want to thank Pastor uh, Derek Wilson for uh, putting that uh, in their heart uh, to do uh, to do that. So God bless them. Um, any other announcements that we need to make? If not, uh let's let's let the lord be the lord and brother john go ahead and close us out in prayer amen everybody can hear me can you all hear me okay yes we're gonna have a closing song and then we go to god in prayer um that message was so powerful this morning the power of love and how we come together and i just want us to wrap our arms around the smiths right now in their time of loss um, just be there for them and show them that love. Um, I'm going to sing a song. I sang it for the um, uh, New Year's program, and many have been asking that we sing it. Um, it's a simple song. When the part comes, all you say is, God's grace, God's grace, we've made it this far by the grace of God. Y'all help me sing this, um, and the, the, day it'll be, the day will be yours. <clears throat> Yeah, yeah. Lord. Mm. How did I make it all these years? How did I make it this far? Through the valleys and over the hills. I know it had to be God, yeah. How did I make it through the storm? How did I make it through the rain? It's not hard, it's easy to see. It's so easy to explain. Here it comes. It was God's grace. God's grace. God's grace. God's grace. God's grace. God's grace. I made it this far. I I made it this far by the grace of God. By the grace of God. Lord, I thank you for how you brought me. How you brought me through the night. Lord, you kept me and you never left me. Lord, you stood by my side. Is that anybody's testimony right now? Yeah. There were times when I came so close. Old men death tried to take me in. Yeah. So the reason that I'm standing right here, yeah, it's so easy to explain. Oh, it was God's grace. God's grace. I need to hear you sing it. God's grace. 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 God's grace.
grace, God's grace, God's grace, I made it, I made it, by the grace of God, oh, God's grace, can you wave your hand, if God has brought you this far, if God never gave up on you, yeah, Wrap your arms, the glory wrap his arms around you. Glory wipe the tears from your eyes. I know you can make it. Yeah. I know it may look tough right now, but God won't leave you. God won't forsake you. God's grace. It was only God's grace. He said, My grace is sufficient. I ain't got to worry about nothing. By the grace of God, oh, God. Yeah. may God bless you and keep you. I know you're going through some things, but because God is standing by, because God has his loving arms wrapped around you, because he is all powerful, you can go ahead and smile in the midst of your storm. You can go ahead and thank God in the midst of your reign. I know you don't understand it, but God has all things under control. Lord, I look back over my life and I realize that I made it this far. It's only because of the grace of God. May God bless you this morning. We're going to go to God in prayer at this time. Father God, we love you. We thank you so much for the opportunity to worship you this morning, dear God. We thank you for the opportunity to be able to hear a word from you, dear God, and just be able to seek your face this morning. Lord, we pray that we had a heart to receive what you have for us, dear God, and we can move forward in a better way. Lord, there's so many that are going through different things right now at this time. Um, we can't list them all, but you know what they need, dear God. We just ask that you bless them all, those that are traveling, those that are battling sickness, those that have uh, confessed their faults. We pray that you just be there for them, dear God, and give them the things they stand in need of. Lord, we ask a special prayer this morning for the Smiths, dear God. Keep them strong. Allow us to be what they need in their leaning post for them right now, dear God. And we pray that we can show the love. The Bible says that they will know that we are Christians by the love that we show one for another. May God bless you. Father, forgive us of our sins and shortcomings. In Jesus' sweet and precious name, amen. Thank you all amen. so much for being patient with us this morning. God bless you. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord.